Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Uh, here we are. Good in, morning. I think we're in the uh, toward the uh, first end of the first week of November. In November, this should be uh, November eighth, I believe. So we're headed toward uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, uh, fall time. Beautiful time. It's always uh, could be can be a fun time. Can be oppressive time sometimes. We'll we'll talk about that later. But uh, I know that you enjoy this time, and we enjoy this time. And, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you got, you got everybody coming up for Thanksgiving. So we don't know yet what our, what the plan, everybody is around. We're all within an hour. And so I know we will have Josh and Emily as they are still living with us. Um, and I know we'll have Anna, I think Caleb and Olivia, I don't know if they're going to her family or for our family yet for Thanksgiving. So we'll hear, but, um, we always claim, you know, now that we're having to do a little more sharing with, um, other families, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we have told the children, um, we would like to lay claim on Thanksgiving. Our door is wide open. Anybody who is available to join us, we absolutely want them to, but a priority for us is the day after Thanksgiving, right? which is our big Christmas decorating day. So we know we have all the kids for that. We'll go cut down a tree and we'll blast the house with a thousand trees and Christmas decorations and laugh and play games. And it's just one of our favorite days. So we'll see. I know we have a handful of them for Thanksgiving, but we will have them all the day after. So that'll be a joy for sure. At least they get uh, leftovers, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's fun this you know, year. Dan, Dan jokingly tells the kids, you know, those who come home for Christmas, those who come home for Thanksgiving, get keys to a new car. So, you know, <laughs> but, but make your choice. No pressure. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And then, then he gives them the keys to a little uh, toy. <laughs> yeah, you got this car, the key. Oh. For us uh, this year, we're doing something uh, different, unique. Um, oh, what are you going to do? Our uh, kids um, are taking us on a cruise. Oh no way! So we're going to uh, we're going in the Caribbean. We're going out of Fort Lauderdale, so it's probably the I think it's called the eastern side. Um, okay. And um, I don't even know all the stops yet, but it's going to be a fun week of that's fantastic. Of, uh, you know, being on the cruise, and it'll be interesting, you know, to see how they do you know, Thanksgiving dinner. Cause it'll be, we'll be, well, they do food so well. So they do, they do pretty good. Do it good right? <laughs> so we'll see how good it is. And, uh, but that, that'll be fun. It'll be unique. And we're all looking forward to that. What so. a great. And so will all the kids, will Josh and Aiden, Josh be home from school and get to do that yep. and everybody will get to join in. Yeah. And they're going with some friends. So they'll actually have friends with them, uh, fun. to do it, you know, so it'll, it'll be, it'll be neat. It'll be good just to be together. So, we are looking forward to that, and they're uh, they're inviting us and taking care of it. So it's uh, like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> that is fantastic. I love that. Uh, nice well, to be on the other side of that now, right? It Where is. somebody else is doing the planning for you, and you That's just right. get to go and enjoy it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and we'll probably because we still we still like making the turkey and homemade dressing mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So we'll probably do it before we leave. Uh, right to uh, at least ex still experience this kind of a, at least a, a kind of a Thanksgiving dinner approach, but right. it'll be do fun. Do you guys, this is, this is probably not interesting to anyone else, but do y'all ever do Bobby's? That's, that's one of the things they say up here. A Bobby is like a Thanksgiving sandwich with the leftovers. Oh yeah. So you literally put the turkey and the stuffing and, and the cranberry all on a, on a good hoagie roll and eat it after. That's better than the real meal. To we me. do that. Yeah. 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 yeah the, uh, <laughs> actually the day after uh, is, is uh, in a way, there's a lot of things nicer than the, than the, than the regular meal, just because of this, <laughs> this kind of stuff. One of the things that Linda does, um, she uh, takes uh, leftover turkey mm -hmm. 
and she makes a uh, fantastic te- uh, turkey tetrazzini with Ooh. with needle noodles and and uh, turkey and mushroom soup and all this and oh, and her sounds good. her uh, recipe is just really 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 good. Oh, I, mean, I so, may have to snag that from yeah. her. Yeah, <laughs> so we we have we have the leftover sandwiches and and then we have this turkey tetrazzini. And it's actually the whole weekend is like, this is really a great time to eat. (laughs) (laughs) So it's kind of fun. Um, Well, last time, last time we were talking about uh, uh, the idea of uh, Christ wanting us to shift our thinking. uh, Because in the natural, people don't even think Mm -hmm. a supernatural solution is available to me. So I'm trying to figure out in the natural, and, and we know if, if we operate that way, because I operated that way for a long time, is, um, you know, sometimes you have pretty good, pretty clever ideas and, and you get mm-hmm. some things accomplished, but a lot of times you don't, and it either stays the same and you would go to what I call resignation. Mm-hmm. I guess this is it. I got to just live with it. Or you actually make it worse. Right. Uh, because you're trying to fix something and you do things, particularly when you're dealing with people and you may, what I call hit the tar baby and you get into a debate and you get into a fight and you get into uh, argument and the enemy's now got you on his, his ground mm-hmm. and it goes worse and worse and worse. And now you got more against you and things are going south on you. And uh, you just, you don't know where to go with that other than, you mm-hmm. know, uh, resignation, keep trying um, and maybe even get into severe problems. But what Christ is trying to do is say, well, because I have a heart to resolve your issues and I have the power to resolve your issues, and my way of doing it is supernaturally because I, I mm-hmm. have the power to do that, come and start thinking that way first. First. Thinking that yes. way natural. And, and you wanted us to talk a little bit about that in terms of how we how we can assist each other in that. So why don't you you know, kind of uh, talk through what you were thinking of there in terms of more than just me doing it. How do I, how do I participate with others in doing it? Right. Well, lots of things go through my mind on this, but the first and foremost that I wanted to just bring um, to the table here is one, the gift and the responsibility in community for us to, to begin to make that our normal speak. Uh, like the normal language and how we function in community rather than going to our solutions, our ideas, and our input when somebody comes to us with a question, being able to help them immediately say, hey, you know, you have taught us well on this, Rich. You, you've drilled this into all the leaders. We're not supposed to be doing, leading them to a to an answer, a solution. We're supposed to lead them to the feet of Jesus and yeah. let him bring them there. Right. And so we really, our question is, okay, so what is God telling you about this? What has he had to say? What does he have to say on it? And so a starting point there, and, you know, I'd say, you know, 75% of the time, the response you get, well, gosh, I haven't really asked him yet. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And so then we start there and, you know, Hey, we have the opportunity to do that. Even in community, if you want someone to come alongside and pray and seek you, you know, seek wisdom on this with you more than happy to do that. But again, the main point I wanted to bring up in this is to really let this begin to, this language begin to infiltrate your communities, that you hold each other to this place of accountability of if we begin to ask each other, what's God saying to you about this, then that begins to put it first on everybody's mind Yep. so that that becomes our default, their default, our entire community's default. And then the way we process together is totally shifted and it goes directly into the supernatural and hearing from God. Yeah. And I think it it takes a culture shift and it takes a cognizant decision to, I'm not going to give you my opinion, even if I have a really strong one right now. First, I'm going to ask you what God has to say. Right. right. And the, uh, see, the beauty of that is that um, as we're learning it, he mm-hmm. says, I want you, this is what discipleship's all about, is mm-hmm. teach them to follow me yes. and receive the answers like you have learned. Um, and so it's a good uh, initiation of that, of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what does God have to say? So that um, a lot of people wind up coming to me, um, and I don't know who they are. I mean, they, and they just said, hey, 
I've got this severe problem. Uh, I'm really stuck. Uh, it seems to be getting worse. Most people around me just say live with it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this person that I know said, you don't have to live with it. Um, God can resolve it. And then, mm -hmm. well, how do I do that? Well, uh, it's, uh, hey, this guy Rich can help you. Mm -hmm. uh, so they call me up and, and they talk about, here's the, the awful thing that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I said, okay, I, I understand it. And the first thing I say to them, what is God saying to you? Yeah. And usually they say, well, what do you mean by that? Right, right. Um, well, I know what has God spoken to you about this problem is like, mm -hmm. I really don't even know what you're talking about. Um, I said, well, you have an issue. You're a believer. God, the Father, and God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit have the answers. Mm -hmm. And they have to communicate that. And the answer isn't how you do things better. It's how they deliver supernatural answers to our oh, every, everyday problems. Um, right. And you got to hear what he has to say because the authority mm -hmm. is what he has to say. And you got to get to the right place for him to deliver it. Um, and so it's like, okay. And the, and the question legitimately is, well, how do you mm -hmm. do that? And I said, okay. Um, before we go into your problem now, mm -hmm. let me teach you that a little bit. It's not right. that complicated. Uh, it's actually easy. You have the Holy Spirit within you. Mm -hmm. I can show you pretty quickly, which by right. the way, in our retreats, we, we describe this. People come Friday night. And they don't know anything about hearing God's voice. On Sunday, mm -hmm. they've all, I mean, and I'm talking all. Every time. There yep. isn't some that nah didn't happen. Everybody. So we're talking thousands of people that we've been through mm -hmm. since, since our uh, beginning in 2001 hear God's voice. In three mm -hmm. days, they hear God's in voice. In a very personal way. Yeah, because yeah. It's, it's not. It's not really that complicated. It's just right. a heart to receive it. And when you when they receive it, they say, oh, my gosh, I heard mm -hmm. God's voice. And so it doesn't take long to say, OK, before we go into your problem, let's let's find this out. I'll, let me help you discover it. Um, when you discover it now, we can go together mm -hmm. and say, what do you have to say about this issue? And then I'm going to show you that piece of it to ask, seek, and knock, and to receive, right. and to process, and to go to unity. Um, and then when you discover God's will, which is what he wants to do for you, supernaturally, mm -hmm. you get excited about it. Right. right. Um, and you'll recognize that, and this is what you're trying to say, is, is that then your tendency is to go back the way you were, but keep learning to go there first mm -hmm. uh, and think that way. And so when you're in a small group, um, and because of that's how we function as leaders and we're in our group, that's all we say all the time. Yeah. And you're so reminded of it. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I better do it. I better do that. It's like, what a privilege I have to do that. Absolutely. Um, and the, the beauty of that too, I'll just highlight because I know on this podcast, we do get a lot of leaders who listen to this is in doing that and really, do, you know, getting that first, you know, becoming that language of first, you know, of going to him first, you begin to attach them to God, to the Holy Spirit, not to yourself as a leader. And that's a really important thing. I think a lot of leaders um, fail and struggle in that without even realizing it. Um, they disciple people to become dependent on them as disciplers, right? <laughs> yeah. rather than going, you know, to equipping them to simply go to the feet of Jesus themselves. Yeah. And, and that's a real difference in, in really humble leadership. Right. 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 Yeah. And plus the, uh, even when, you know, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's the, uh, well, let's go and see what you have to say that God has to say to you. Cause there's times when, uh, because of my relationship with Christ, I actually know the answer. Right. Right. Um, but, but it's not yours to tell yet. But, <laughs> If, and this is important, um, for every single person, remember their privilege, their privilege mm -hmm. is to hear God directly. Yes. Um, and so he says, keep, 
assisting, which is what you're trying to mm -hmm. highlight here, is keep assisting others to think that way and process that way. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is confirm it. Right. Which, by the way, is a, is a beauty of unity. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so as a couple, you know, if you're learning this and even your spouse hasn't learned it yet, would be, you know, hey, let's seek God's answer here and let's let us go see what God has to say about this. Right. And yeah, hey, honey, even go ahead. Just a little example of that. Um, you know, recently we had some friends in town who were um, seeking, you know, a big decision coming up and they are ones who, who are really good about abiding and asking what God has to say. And like, you know, Hey, while we're in town, we would just love to just sit and pray with you guys and share what God's laying on our heart. And then you'll know, see if God, you'll know, see what God says to you as well and pray through it and just really talk it through in discernment. And uh, it was so cool because early, I mean, as they start the discussion, they were probably not two minutes into the discussion. And I knew within the, my spirit that exactly, I, I knew what was coming, mm -hmm. you know, like God just laid on my heart, you know, this is, this is what I'm doing. They will be stepping into this and my hand is on this, but your job is not to tell them that your job is to listen and ask the right questions so that they see that I have already told them this, right, Conne right, help right. them connect the dots. Right, right, and right. so he's like, just, just when I put a question on your heart, ask it, and they're going to connect the dots to what they've already heard. And it was beautiful watching it play out, yeah. you know, and it was just so much fun to even be a part of that in and of itself was supernatural, yep. you know? Yep. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Um, and you know, this story that actually we talk, we're going to talk about today is, um, as you're doing that, he says, remember, it's always personal. Mm -hmm. And the reason isn't to just get the supernatural answer. It's to be in relationship to yes. the one that can deliver. You know, so uh, this, this, this neat little story. And remember, we're talking about choices uh, that we're invited to make to pursue and open ourselves up to God's work supernaturally. So go to John 4, mm -hmm. uh, 46 to 54. Sure. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed in his whole household. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Okay, so um, he says, "Hey, I got a problem here. Uh, mm -hmm. My my son is uh, sick and dying, and it really concerns me. And again, um, I know you have the power to do this. Mm -hmm. I've I've experienced this. I've I've watched it. Uh, people have told me about it." I'm coming to you. And then Jesus asks and makes an interesting statement. Mm -hmm. uh, what does he say here? He says, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Okay. So um, he's saying, um, I'm going to check your motive. Mm -hmm. um, are you coming to just see me do something? Mm. Or are you coming because you're coming to me to deliver an answer and a solution to you personally? Right. Um, what, which, which one of these is, is your motive? And mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, and we see other stories where their motive was, you know, just, we just want you to show a sign. We don't even care what it is. Right. Just show it. So to prove that you're God. Right, uh, right. And he said, well, don't test me. And I'm not going to prove that I'm God to anybody. I am God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my my work will prove itself, but mm -hmm. it's about your motive. What's your motive? And um, and the guy says, well, he doesn't even answer that. He says, that's not why I've come. Mm -hmm. He said, well, 
can you just heal my son? That's right. all I care about. <laughs> all I want is my son. You back. know, can you can you just heal my son? And um, and so he got the answer to Christ. Christ got the answer to him checking his motive. Is mm-hmm. what what are you really seeking here? And mm-hmm. and so as he says, it's a choice. And I want you to come after me. He says, I don't want you to come after me just to say, um, do something supernatural and mm-hmm. prove, prove to me that because I because remember, it's out of the context. We're talking about this is there's a natural skepticism. Right. Uh, is, well, I haven't seen it that much. And I wonder if it's really true. And so, OK, you know what? I'm willing to receive it. God, do something supernatural, and then I'll believe it. Mm-hmm. He said, with all your den is seeking is the sign of the supernatural. You're not seeking me. Um, so that this is a deep, profound piece of the supernatural is the way to receive the supernatural is not to seek the supernatural per se. Mm, right. It's to seek the one that, that delivers <laughs> you know, and be in relationship with him so that he can guide and direct you. That's so good. Yeah. In the situation you're in and deliver the supernatural work, but you're, you're receiving it out of that relationship. Mm-hmm. If you now think about this, if you learn that and it comes out of the relationship, where would you then stay? In relationship. In, in relationship. You'd always be in relationship and receive mm-hmm. the answers and the, and the uh, direction, particularly in our life. Uh, it's about timing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That, um, hey, God, I need, a pro- I need a problem solve, solve it. Our desire for that timing would be what? Immediate resolution. <laughs> do, <laughs> hey, do it tomorrow. I mean, you know, come on. Um, uh, and by the way, Part of that is born out of the stories that we read in Scripture, mm-hmm. in the Gospels particularly, because those solutions were kind of delivered instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, well, give me that, you know. And right. he says, well, it's a walk, and it's timing, and I will, and there's wisdom, and there's relationship here, and I want to show you that. If you pursue the relationship, seek ye first the kingdom of God, which right. means I'm the king and you're not, and you're in my kingdom and you're being led by me and you hear because of my righteousness, all these things will be added. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you, if you seek the things, right. You said, you've disqualified me from giving it to you because you've walked away into the flesh and you're not in the kingdom anymore and I can't give it right. to you. Uh, There's another verse that you've taught on before um, where the where you talk about the blessings will overtake yeah. you from behind. Deuteronomy but if 28, you're chasing one and the two. blessing yep. versus chasing him, yep. you know, there's yep. a big difference there. Yep. It says, if you hear me and you follow me, the blessings will come from behind you and overtake you. Mm-hmm. If you stop looking for me and following me and look for the blessing and turn around and say, I want the blessing, he said, you actually stop it. Right. So it's right. kind of, it's kind of an interesting thing. And so it's a relationship. And he basically said, are you here to see the sign? No, I actually need you to, could you please heal my son? Right. And then he says, may it be done. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Now, uh, he goes home, uh, Hey, your son's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, when exactly did that happen yesterday? Hap- yeah. Um, and he says, well, that's when Jesus said it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now this is cool. Uh, he said, that's when Jesus said it. Um, and uh, the last, uh, in verse 53, what does it say? And he himself then what? Believed and his whole household. Then mm-hmm. I believed it. Um, yeah. And so Jesus is saying, look, um, I want to deliver the supernatural. I'm going to check your motive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate it to you as I demonstrate it to you, which is what happened mm-hmm. to the disciples. So here's what's happening here. Um, I'm delivering it. And now your faith is starting to grow. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think we even see that, like if we back up and we look at verse 50, um, you know, Jesus says, go your way, your son lives. And it says, so the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he went his way. Right. So there was a step towards belief there that he acted on. Okay, you said this, so I'm going to take this next step. But clearly his belief was not complete yet 
because then we go to verse 53 and, and he himself believed and so did his whole family. Yeah. And I love that that even shows the process of belief and growth in that sometimes we act on a step of, we may not have the full yet, but we act on the step of what we know, what he's calling, and then he grows even our belief. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, well, Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that uh, you're asking us as we're choosing not to have a motive to test you, but rather to receive. And that receiving comes from the relationship. And as we receive it and believe that what you say, we get to see it happen. And then we even go deeper in our faith and want to do it more where we will say to each other, what is God saying? And so we just pray that we have that heart that we don't drift into just seeking the supernatural, but rather to be recipients of the supernatural because of our relationship with you. And we praise you and we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Great discussion today. If this brought questions up to you, send them in to us at questions at afjministry.com and we'd love to talk about them. Meanwhile, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining yep, us. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.